Claptrap Show and it's Sunday Favourites. And we've got a little one for you from Arlo Guffrey. This song is called Alice's Restaurant. It's about Alice and the restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant is not the name of the restaurant. That's just the name of the song. And that's why we call this song Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. It all started about four Thanksgivings ago. It was about four years ago on Thanksgiving when my friend and I went up to see Alice and her husband Ray and Pacha the dog. Alice doesn't live in the restaurant, though. She lives in a church nearby the restaurant in the bell tower. Living in the bell tower like that, they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be, seeing as how they took out all of the pews and Having all that room down there, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for an extra special long time. Having all that garbage in there, we decided that it would be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the town dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the town dump. Well, we got there, and there was a big sign and a chain across the road saying, Closed on Thanksgiving. And we had never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before. So with tears in our eyes, we drove off down the road looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one till we came to a side road, and off of the side of the side road was a 15-foot cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage, and we decided that one big pile was better than two little ones, and rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. That's what we did. Went back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat. Went to sleep and didn't get up until the next day when we got a phone call from Officer Roby. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage. Just wanted to know if you have any information about it. I said, yes, sir, Officer Roby, I cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope under that garbage. After speaking to Obi for about 45 minutes on the telephone, we finally arrived at the truth of the matter, and Obi said we had to go down and pick up the garbage, but first we had to go down and see him at the police officer's station. So we got back in the red VW microbus with the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and headed on toward the police officer's station. Now, friends, there was only one or two things that Obi could have done, and the first was that he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest on the telephone which wasn't very likely, and we didn't expect that anyway. And the other possibility was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again, which is what we expected. But when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility that we hadn't even counted upon, and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed. I said, Obi, we can't pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, kid, shut up. Get in the back of the patrol car, and we sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Now, friends, I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this was happening. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years. And everybody wanted to get in a newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment that they had hanging around the police officer station. They was using plaster, tire track, footprints, fingerprints 
friends, dogs, smelling friends, and they took 27 8 5 10 color glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Took pictures of the approach to get away, the northwest corner and the southwest corner, and that's not to mention the aerial photography. After the ordeal, we went back to the church and had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next day. When we had to go to court, we walked in, sat down, Obi came in, sat down, the man came in, said, all rise, we stood up, Obi stood up. The judge walked in, sat down, with the C&I dog, and the dog sat down. We sat down. Obi looked at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Then looked at the CNI dog. Then looked at the judge. Then looked at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with the circles and the paragraphs and then began to cry. Obi came to the realization that it was a typical case of American blind justice, and there wasn't nothing he could do about it. We had to pay $50 and pick up the garbage. <laughs> As the sound of Arlo Guffrey. You're listening to Bruno Penning and you're listening to Sunday Vinyl Favourites. Great sound of Fats Domino. You're listening to Sunday Favorites with Bruno Benning. Two. 
And a good night, Irene Les Paul. A little bit of reggae sound for you now. By the Marini Brothers. You're listening to Sunday Favorites.
You're listening to the Bruno Benning Claptrap Show, Sunday Vinyl Favourites. A bit of Wilson Pickett for you. Sunday Vinyl Favourites with the Bruno Benning Claptrap Show. Got more goodies coming up for you. And now, Leander. I've been a bad, bad boy.
You're listening to Bruno Benning. Vinyl favourites. This one from the Four Pennies. That's the sound of the four pennies and crying inside. We've got Freddie Star for you. Halfway to paradise. Oh, 
you're listening to the Bruno Benning Claptrap Show, Sunday favourites on vinyl for you. Love me tender. Love me tender, love me sweet, never let me go. You're listening to the Bruno Benning Claptrap Show, Sunday favourites on vinyl. We're going to play you out now with a little one which we'll start off next Sunday with, with uh, Cheers for Souvenirs from Ken Dodd. So we'll see you again next Sunday. And it's bye for now from the Bruno Benning Claptrap Show. Have a good one. <laughs>